our first test and trial was to design a landscape management plan and what resources would be required. So we need to understand what that commercial agreement looks like, which is where we've progressed into the next test and trial. Value is the key, isn't it? That was what we were looking at, blended funding. So how, how do we pull together private finance and public finance to deliver a greater environmental good? And one of the big challenges or one of the big barriers we had was um, trust. And trust really is underpinned by three pillars. We identified that actually behind trust you've got education. The farmers and the corporates don't feel like they know enough about this emerging space to actually be informed enough to then have some sort of negotiation about a trade. So education is key to actually start to facilitate this space. And at the moment, that education just isn't there on all, on all sides. You've got flexibility. Farmers are being approached by corporates to essentially lock them into five, 10, 15 year, 20 year contracts. And farmers don't really have the ability at the moment to reverse those contracts. Once they've signed up, they're committed. And we've had lots of stories from farmers saying that they've you know, got, a, got a friend or a peer who has signed up to five years and realized that actually now they're, they're operating that scheme at a loss. So the flexibility of the contracts of the agreements, especially as the market's getting established, needs to be there. And then the third pillar underpinning trust is finance. At the moment, there just isn't enough money flowing in from the corporate sector because they're not mandated to at the moment. You know, at the moment, it's the voluntary market. And in those voluntary markets, you're investing ahead of any policy. And so it's all your risk. It's all your investment. You're, you're putting the money forward. You're, you're, you're paying for the audits. You're paying for, for the assessments. And effectively, you're eating into your margin while your competitors don't have to pay that if they've chosen not to invest. So if we can fix the trust model, because at the moment that trust has eroded, if we can fix the trust model by focusing on education, flexibility and finance, I think then we're going to be in a position to actually be able to deliver some really meaningful environmental impact. So these are our northern dairy shorthorn cattle. This is a suckler herd. They're brilliant for this sort of environment. <coughs> They get into the nettles, the thistles. They're wonderful for helping us to manage the environment here. If we can work collaboratively, then potentially we can, across the catchment, understand where environmental services might be best, best place, where, where farming might be best place. The farmers obviously know their farms the best. They know which areas are most productive. Um, uh, predominantly, um, although there are lots of new um, ways now with satellite data and everything else, it's all very fast moving, that we're now starting to pick up um, areas of ground that perhaps farmers thought would be more productive than they actually were. As the sophistication of this market grows, then we might find that farmers would actually be prepared to put more land into some of these projects. There's a good reason to do that, or there's more potential funding available to do that. I was starting to get more interested in the way farming was going. There was a push towards environmental concerns, carbon. Potentially that could be also become part of your business. But what was particularly useful about getting together with other farmers was to see how we can take these individual actions and combine them with our neighbours to make a much bigger, probably more impactful result. This was an opportunity to sit down with neighbours that you wouldn't have had such a long conversation with before. Farmers collaborate commercially, whether it's renting land or commercial agreements, things that are going to help the business financially. Getting people to collaborate in terms of environmental benefits will require government support. Blended finance, from my point of view, could be a very beneficial thing as long as it really is properly thought out. If it's in terms of our environment, uh, nature, biodiversity, the corporate sector shouldn't have any decision making on how these things get managed. And this is where the government's role in this is, making sure these are a long lasting arrangements, especially if it's something to do with the environment. We need long term policy. As it's progressed, we've been looking at landscape recovery and blended finance. It's a really open forum in that group. I, th I find it really good that farmers don't just turn up, they turn up and get involved. You know, I want to learn from my, my neighbours, and especially with some of the environmental work that you're doing, there isn't actually a formula there to do it 100% right in that location and you can learn from your neighbours on how they do things and get benefit for, for your own business. The government will be there as a guideline. There's a big gap between land managers and, and the corporates. This sector of them 
uh, funding these projects, habitat projects, allowing them to come out and farm, see what's going on. I think a lot of the public sector money will go. We'll see more private sector funding and therefore it's the corporates that do have a responsibility for what is happening on the land and supporting the landowners. Long term, it, they will be equally as interested in what is being produced from these grass margins, wildflower margins, hedge planting, tree planting, because it will be biodiversity net gain credits and carbon credits that they will be wanting to trade with the landowners. We want to do this for real, taking private finance from the corporate world and the world of the farmer and seeing how we can bring together government money to finance those environmental services. We want to bring corporates together, we want to bring farmers together and we want to say what does a contract look like between the two of you and can we actually set a heads of terms, not execute the contract, but actually can we set a legally binding heads of terms that's going to allow you to execute that trade then ultimately we've got the fundamentals of something that we can scale. And when we get to that scenario and farmers are faced with the cash, they're faced with the corporate at the door, then I think we'll get to a set of conditions that actually deliver some impact. <laughs>